everybody. Today I'm super duper duper excited. Why is that, you wonder? Because last year I reviewed this. Puro de Sorales from Ecuador. This is a, a cane juice based rum, wild fermented, and I absolutely adored it. Um, the uh, Celestion Masal folks brought this in. It was the first Ecuadorian rum I'd seen on the shelves in Chicago ever. Um, and it's fantastic. It's got like 80% of the weird, savory, wild fermentation madness that you want out of like a you know, backwoods Mexican rum or uh, a Claren from Haiti. But it's also like... If you just want to turn your brain off, it's willing to cooperate when you throw in some lime and simple syrup and some ice. It's really, really versatile. It's it's like, think of this stuff like the the Rolex Explorer of cane, <laughs> cane juice rums. What I mean by that, if you were to pare down your collection to just this, you'd be missing out on a lot of cool stuff, but you'd you'd probably be fine. Like if, if I were to pick a house cane juice rum, this, this would be a good one. The, the screw cap is terrible, though. It's plastic. It's not nice. Um, anyways, so my excitement is there's now more Ecuadorian uh, cane juice rum out there and available. Uh, and we've got selections from uh, the um, 1423 folks, which is a Danish bottler. I like Danish bottlers. Um, this is really just European retail right now, but... A um, couple of European retailers, and we've got El Amparo, which is the um, the big boy in the block. This is the kind of uh, all star thoroughbred athlete because this is being brought in by Velier, who for twenty plus years at least has really been the world leader in bringing in nerdy rum and rum and doing. Uh, worldwide distribution for it, mainly because no one else really bothered at the time. So uh, I am super excited. This is kind of the, the Puro de Salaralis has kind of set the benchmark. And we're going to see what these others can do. Uh, let's get these poured. Both these pretty darn strong. The Not as strong as the Puro. This is 60.1%. Um, these are only around 57, but uh, that's good enough. And let me finish pouring these and I'll tell you all about them. There we go. <clears throat> all right, we're going to start out with this from the 1423 Volks. This is part of their SBS Origins series, Ecuador. Malacatos. Malacatos is a, a city kind of in the far, far south of Ecuador. Um, and not much information on this about who's making it or anything. That All they say is it's it's uh, cane juice based, column distilled, so short column still, and distilled in 2022. Bottled at 57%. And that's it. But uh, the price wasn't bad, so, and I I was very curious, so I snatched it up. So let's get some notes on the table here. Again, 57% alcohol. Yes, on the nose. We are in Savory City. Yeah, this smells... I mean, this smells like food. Uh, let's start with that. I'm getting mixed olives... Fennel, kind of classic rummy notes. Fried green tomatoes. Yeah. Uh, lemon juice. It's it's lemon, but it's it's the juice. It's not the peel. Usually it's the peel. Not this time. And there's kind of like a floral thing, but it's almost like um like wet flowers, like like soggy flowers. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, like something soggy floral. There's a little bit of like a something industrial, but nice. 
like a like a wet paint kind of thing. Um, not uh, not interior paint. This is exterior paint. This is uh, sealed against rain. But yeah, there's a there's also like a lovely brininess to this. It's really like kind of like smelly stuff by the seashore. Um, there's more minerality, but it's what. It, it's actually almost metallic. Um, rust, maybe? I don't know. S something like that. And then way in the back, there's some hints of something fruity, like, uh, I don't know, like breadfruit. When I went in Jamaica, I was introduced to breadfruit. Oh, ooh, an Escoviche snapper absolutely like um so sort of maybe not like fruity more more like almost a pickled note if that makes sense and like one underripe peach um very nice very yeah i mean i mean you've got those savory notes but it's not going as as crazy as like you know uh full hog as as you get in back with mexico It's a little bit more understated, which is I, which is a, a style I appreciate. All right, let's see what happens on the palette. Ooh, super serious, super duper austere, in a good way. Um, Very minerally. Uh, how do I analyze this? Like it's like chewing on wet beach sand. So it's not just sand. It's like sand that's been soaking in salt water, and you kind of like pick it up and put some in your mouth. Um, there's also like a almost some kind of candied note, but it's it's unusual. Tropical chewing gum, like kiwi chewing gum, something like that. Lime peel, toasted lime peel, white pepper. Um, da, 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 da. I mean, your your usual array of uh, wild fermented cane juice stuff, fennel, olives, salted licorice. Um, those kind of like damp, wilted soggy flowers again along with like damp wilted soggy basil we're gonna throw that in there that little that little rusty thing really good mouth presence tons of mouth presence hard to ding this it's it's, it's very nice um Maybe just a, like it's got that austerity. I, we'll, I'm gonna add some water, see if that changes. Maybe this will bring out the sweetness. Maybe just a hair bit simpler than the, the Piro was, but uh, I'm not gonna complain. This is a this is a hell of a rum. Um, so we're gonna add some water and then move on. One, it's 57, so close to five, three, four, maybe four and a half. See if we need more. No, I'm gonna stop there. Ooh, it does just kind of sweeten up a little. Let's come back to that. All right. El Amparo. Again, this this. It's Vellier, so it should get a uh, distribution basically anywhere you are. This is from uh, GP Japa uh, in Ecuador, which is basically on the far west coast, sort of central western Ecuador, and is distilled and also farmed by Carlos Baque Zorilla. Hope I'm getting that right. Um, and it's also a column distilled just like this guy. A short column still and this is it actually has a lot number so this is uh where they put it 
Yeah, L1-23, so presumably bottle 2023. Let's see what we got here. 57.5%, so a hair bit stronger. Ooh. It's actually pretty different. Let me, let me, get, let me get a handle on this. Uh, there's some interesting things going on. We're not... Yeah, I mean, interesting, but also, like, I'm just trying to put names to it. I mean, that smells like you took, um, take a mirable plum, like the orange plums, and then, like, roll it around in black pepper, and then, like, drop it right in the middle of someone's garden, right after they've, they've, finished tending it so you're getting like mud and flowers and soil and fertilizer and all kinds of earthy grungy stuff yeah, that's, that's about the best I can do with that uh, plus of course the usual like brine fennel um, and and you know tons of olives It's a little bit more muted on the nose, actually, than the than the malacatos. A little bit of like a raw carrot kind of thing, including the greens. Maybe like a little. This is gonna sound weird, but like a like a pickled citrus note. You could, I don't know if you could pickle lemons, but there's a little bit of maybe that. I don't know. Let's move on to the palette. Ooh. Also pretty austere. Actually more austere than the Malacatos. My first impression is like cane juice amaro if that makes sense. Like if you could somehow make an, a, 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 an Amaro out of cane juice, this might be what it's like. There's, there's a lot of tree bark, there's a lot of gentian going on, pepper, clove. Um, no, there's a little bit of sweetness creeping through. It's a little bit of a, like a pop rock kind of thing. You've got your usual brine, olive, fennel. That's obligatory. But yeah, it's very, especially on the back end, it gets very kind of bitter and astringent. It really does have like an, a digestif kind of character to it. But it works. Um, orange peel, maybe? Like an, like an aged burly tobacco thing that's starting to get a little bit like funky and, and nutty. Um, again, it's very good. It's very austere. All I want is just a little bit more complexity. You know what? Actually, hold on. We're going to do this. Uh, let's see if I can make this thing, because I've got a glass over there. Hold on a sec. Yeah, I'm wearing plaid jammies today. Don't judge. I want, I don't have my notes for the, the Puro in front of me, but. Just kind of want to have something a, the, you know, like a baseline to compare these two. Let's add water to the Amparo. Four, I'm gonna go four and a half with this too. And Piro, I actually haven't had this in a while. Yeah, more savory. Um, definitely bringing them 
like a more overt kind of sun-dried tomato thing. We have some more. On the palette. Yeah, even neat. Maybe this just has, this has just had more time open, had more more air getting in there. But yeah, there's some uh, Smarties candy happening. There's more kind of sweetness and just a little bit more detail here. Until we get to the, through the second time through, I, I think this might still be winning. Actually, um, one more time. And you can you can feel that extra three percent in there. I'm gonna give this a squirt or two as well, just for fun. All of it's just for fun. Okay. Thank you for bearing with me. Back to the malacatos. On the nose now with water. Oh, okay. With water, um, it, the the sweetness does come through a little bit. It's um, it's still a lot of fried green tomatoes. It's still that kind of character, but I'm I'm getting those um. What are the candies in like the little purple box with like they're like little globs, but they're hard. Was it nerds? I think it was nerds. I think it was nerds. Whatever those candies were. So it's fried green tomatoes with nerds on top. And also a little bit of just like cane syrup creeping through. Nice. On the palate. Yeah, again, it's it, a little bit of sweetness comes through. really bring um, a great deal more complexity to it but yeah it does lighten up it does crack a smile now yeah delicious spicy minerally cane juice stuff not even like yeah just like Order, go go to the, you know, the South, Louisiana, Texas, wherever. Order a glass of iced cane juice and then throw a bunch of spices and like rocks in there and then drink it. That's, that's just kind of how this is behaving now. Um, it's not as, as super complicated as, as this guy, the Puro, but I don't care. Like this is, this is super nice. I'm going to give this 87 points. Let's say 87 points. Yep, let's move on. El Amparo. Now with a little bit of water. Um, see what happens on the nose. Nice. Huge amount of change, to be honest. It's still like really earthy. Kind of like pickled citrus. Um, that little Mirabelle hint. Maybe like a key lime in there somewhere, like more, like more gravel than before. Not a ton of development from before, but that's okay. It was nice. It was nice before. It's nice now. On the palate. <laughs> it softens up a bit. Um, 
a little bit, a little bit more sweetness creeps through. But it's still very much like cane maro, if that makes sense. It, this is still very much cane juice rum as digestif, like old Italian men sitting around the table after a meal drinking espresso with this little, with this kind of poured in there. Um, and I kind of love it for that. It's, it's, it's unusual. This is not what I expected. Tricky to score because in, well, I shouldn't say I love it. I appreciate it. I respect the heck out of this. It's not my personal prefer preferred style. I kind of prefer the Malacatos more personally, but I'm tasting between these two. I'm looking for objective differences in quality, and I just think they're pretty close, honestly. Um, this is more edgy. It's more difficult. Um, but yeah, I'm going I'm to score this the same. I'm going I'm to call this an 87 points. <clears throat> yeah, that like tree bark thing is not what I expected the cane juice from, but it's fun. Um, Meanwhile, Puro is, yeah, gloriously savory. Oh, God. Super weird, super complex, but very, very delicious. Not actually sweet, but the, the sense of sweetness is just completely compelling. Yeah, this is... Of the three I've seen so far, this is my favorite. And um, between these two, like, I'm, you know, it's, it's basically a matter of personal taste. I think the level is the same. And that's kind of, I mean, that's interesting. Maybe that can be my conclusion, my way to try to land this thing, is this is a Velier product, right? This should be, sweet, you know, sweeping these other two off the table in terms of kind of absolute quality, because that's what Velia has tried to do. But that's not what's going on, which means other importers, other uh, producers are starting to step up their game a little bit. Um, they're starting to be, you know, in the fight with the 500 pound grill that has dominated the sphere of nerdy rum for 20 years. And that's, that's awesome. Not because I don't like Velier. I, I do. I love their stuff. Um, and I love what they do. But I love seeing a market more. I love the fact that, you know, producers now, if they're if they're working with an with an importer or just you know, worldwide distributor, can always be eyeing the next distributor over to see if they can get a better deal. That's fantastic. I love that consumers can find you know similar products being brought in by different people in the same aisle that's great that's great like this all this just makes me super duper happy all these are great rums not great rums super duper good rums um and it's just it's different producers bringing them in terrific terrific i love it uh, 87 points for these two newbies and, of course, an 88 for the Puro. Thanks for watching and cheers.